Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's a Cremel School. Almond shape is one of the most popular ones and I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. Let's see how to make this shape with Acrygel. Next, we will do a cat's eye design with stamping and rhinestones. So watch the video till the end, it will be really exciting, so give a thumbs up and let's get into it. I'm completely removing the lens of the free edge, removing the gel polish coating almost to the natural nail, leaving a thin layer, which I will later remove with the file. I lift up the cuticle with a diamond flame drill bit. I will cut it later after sculpting, completely removing the lens of the free edge, checking its symmetry and removing the leftovers of the base cut with a soft file. Note that I work with a file, not a buffer, in order to lift up the nail plate scales well. Make sure there are no glossy areas on the nail. Degreasing the nail plate. In addition, I will apply a dehydrator and a primer in a thin layer. I'm letting the primer dry a little bit and apply this gel base cut because it's a rubber one and so is polygel. Applying a thin layer on all the nails at once. Check if your Acrygel needs a base cut. In my case, the Gelactic Gel Hybrid needs a base cut. Cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. I'm going to set up the form. Look, this one has got a special gap with a small hole. It allows me to set up the form without cutting it out. I twist it and place it under the nail plate. I slightly tilt it down so that my almonds won't be lifted. Sticking the lower ears together and correcting the symmetry of the form. I can turn my client's hand over, making sure that the central axis of the finger follows the form. And I can cut off the extra. And now I carefully start squeezing the form pressing it into a needle tip. Don't push too hard at first, because you can bend the form. One ear covers up the other, which means that the form is slightly tilted down. The lens will be up to the second mark. My model's nails grow downwards, so I'm not lowering my form down too much, just a little bit. Here we will have a straight sidewall and a slight lift. Now let's try out the form without a special gap. I twist the form and place it under the nail. Look, if I leave it as it is, the form will be too high. So I need to tilt the form down a little bit. But from the side view, we can see that there is still a gap between the form and the nail plate, and later on there could be a crack, so I'm going to cut it out in the middle. I cut a little deeper and put it back on the model's nail. I mark where I want to make cuts. My model has got small lateral folds, so I don't need to cut out more, just make cuts. I'm sticking the form together, one ear to the other. I put the form on the nail, turn the hand over and check the axis. And only now I slowly press the form. Under the finger, in the middle and underneath. Once again, you can see that one ear covers up the other and the form is slightly tilted down. Note that the index finger usually grows strongly downwards, 
and if you tilt the form down, then the nail will be curved. So unstick the ears and fix the form on the nail. If you feel that the form does not fit, it means that the side folds interfere with it, so make bigger diagonal cuts. I will be using Galactic Camouflage Poly Gel and a transparent pink one to build up the architecture and make a smooth transition near the cuticle and this liquid from Onyq to keep the brush from sticking. I'm using a natural brush for acrylic sculpting. I'm squeezing out a drop of the hybrid gel. Putting it in the center of the nail plate. I suck the brush in the liquid a little bit and wipe off the excess. First, I press in the central part of the material and spread it on the sides. Next, I push the material forward with a brush to create a smooth transition. I'm not putting it close to the cuticle, because there is going to be a transparent pink material. I carefully press the sidewalls and with a brush surface, I start pulling out Acrogel, forming the lens I need and smoothing out the surface. I'm checking the sidewalls, there is a straight line and a little lift, a straight line again and a little lift. I'm checking the tip for an even underlay. I can also align the material moving backwards, so that the tip is not too thick. Curing the lamp for 30 seconds. I'm grabbing a drop of a transparent pink gel and putting it on the highest point. I follow the same principle. First, I push it in the central part, spreading on the sides, forming a smooth transition near the cuticle and carefully pressing the material with the tip of my brush at a 45 degree angle. If the material is not pressed tightly, it will peel off later. It is one of the most common mistakes, so make sure to keep an eye on how well you press the material. It should be smooth and thin in the cuticle area and on the sidewalls. Sock in the brush and pull in the material to the free edge. So there is almost none of it. This transparent pink gel allowed me to form the highest point, the apex, and a smooth transition near the cuticle. A client may wear such nails for a long time, for about a month, and there won't be any strong transition near the cuticle. Of course, I could have formed the architecture with a camouflage material at once, but I wanted to show you this exact method and a smooth transition from the cuticle to the gel. I don't recommend sculpting with one large drop, because such a thick layer in the center of the nail simply won't cure in the lamp and will be wet inside. I'm always checking the arch so there are no bumps. You should lay out the material gently and smooth it out because it will save you time when filing. Cure in the lamp for 20 seconds. I'm removing the form from the underlay. I'm taking it off like this. And to make almonds more elegant, we put a metal clip on. Now we need to cure it, but I will cure it with the other nails later. Acrogel does not flow all over the nail plate and you can build up several nails at once. I bring the material to the white lunula, but don't cover it. This way the nail growth will look as natural as possible. I have formed the underlays on two nails and now cure them in the lamp. Don't tap too hard on the surface with a brush, as this can cause bubbles. 
try to pull out the material. And let's take a look at one of the most common mistakes. When there is no straight line on the sidewall and no smooth lift. And you start lifting up the side parallel diagonally. From the top, your nails may look almond shaped. But the sidewall will be lifted and the nail will be like a trampoline. So we should make a straight sidewall and a smooth lift. I take off the paper forms and put on the clips. We have already got a nice arch for a salon almond shape, but for a better result we will fix it with clips and cure the material for 2 minutes. I take off the clips, degrease the nail pleat and start filing. Since polygel is a soft material, I use a file with a soft abrasive. I file the length, get in the file under the nail pleat. After that, I narrow the sidewalls on one side and on the other side. And I file the almond shape from the top view. I put the finger on the side and file the lower parallel. Turning it to the other side, there is a straight line and a smooth lift upwards. Now the cuticle line and round in the surface. Let's take a look at the architecture. There is a smooth lift at the highest point, the apex, which is in the central part of the natural nail plate, and it smoothly goes down. Then I buff the surface with a soft side. If I had not applied gel polish all over the nail plate, I wouldn't have polished it that much, but since we are doing a French manicure, I need a smooth surface. I lift up the cuticle and cut it off with scissors. I'm dehydrating the nail plate and start painting French. For this, I need a black gel polish. I completely cover up the ring finger with black. For the design, I need a cat eye gel polish. This one has got a 3D effect, since there are a few colors in it. I'm filling in my French tips. Don't apply a thick layer, just a thin layer of the gel polish. Apply a magnet to form the highlight. Curing the lamp, I remove the tacky layer and do some stamping over the cat's eye. Let's add some rhinestones. I put Swarovski pearl in the center and frame it with beads. I choose metal ones so that they don't lose color. I attach the beads on the gel base cut for a good bonding. I apply a top coat and align it a little bit, making sure there is no layering because our French is pretty thick with two layers of gel polish, so check the highlights. I can cover up the beads with a top coat, but I don't touch the pearl, so that it does not lose its shine.
I remove the rest of the paint from the skin and here is the result. The nails look great. The cat's eye shines beautifully. Write in the comments if you like this design and the sculpting technique. Subscribe to the channel to keep up with our new videos. Success in your work! Bye-bye!